Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the science behind the scenes at Chicago's Field Museum. For this episode, we ask collections and research staff to answer the question, why are museum collections important? I'm Dr. Corey Moreau. I'm an assistant curator here in the Department of Zoology, and my specialty is ants, and I work in the Division of Insects. So collections are incredibly important because they document um, biodiversity or species diversity, not just in a particular place, but across time. So by continuing to add to our growing collections, we're not only sort of showing that the species is still present, but we can document not just whether a species is present or not. We can, we can document whether their distributions have changed through time, either through natural factors or through, through things that have been caused by human um, disturbance or human-induced climate change. We can also look at how genetic diversity has changed through time. So by sampling specimens that were collected, you know, a long time ago, through contemporary collections, we can look at how the genetic diversity has been affected through these natural and human mediated processes. I think that in in the study of human induced climate change, biological collections are going to be some of the most powerful tools for us to understand just how we are affecting the biodiversity of the planet. So going back to museums like the field museums and collections across other museums and universities will really help us understand how we're affecting those species. My name is Gary Feynman. I'm the curator of Mesoamerican and Central American anthropology here at the field museum. I'm a an anthropological archaeologist. The short answer to why it's important to have collections is because you never know what technologies or what ideas will be available 50 years from now that will enable researchers at that time to squeeze more critical information out of those specimens that we have no idea might be possible today. My name is Laura Briscoe, and I am a research assistant in the botany department. I was just talking to a group of undergraduate interns today, and I said, I asked if any had visited an herbarium before. No one had. I said, well, do you have a guess of what an herbarium is? And someone said, well, is it a bunch of plants? And I said, yeah. And I said, I like to think of it as a library of plants. We have I think over two million plant specimens here at the Field Museum. I receive requests on a monthly basis of researchers from all over the world. And so in that way, the Field Museum is this amazing resource for researchers all over the world. We provide a vital resource for them. You could not do research without collections by allowing for our collections to be made available to people all over the world. And it's humbling to be involved in curating them, taking care of them, putting them away, making sure that they're safe. So that's an amazing feeling to be part of history like that. I'm Bob Inger. I'm curator emeritus in the Division of Amphibians and Reptiles in the Department of Zoology. You can go out in the field, as many biologists do, Mm -hmm. and make observations without collecting, and you can learn a lot of things about the behavior of animals and plants, but there are other questions that you cannot answer without having a specimen in the hand. And you can't very well handle live specimens and then release them expecting they'll be okay, because nine times out of ten they won't be okay. So, for example, now with preserved specimens that I've brought back to the collection, I can look in the stomachs of frogs and find out what the various species have been eating. You can't do that unless you can dissect an animal, and you can't dissect it if it's alive and then let it go. And you can also make closer observations on variation within species, variation in size or body proportions. And you can also learn things about the temporal patterns of reproduction. 
most of us can't afford to sit for a year or 18 months in one place in the field. So we can learn things about behavior, the diet and reproductive activities from preserved specimens that would be very difficult to do in the field with living animals. I am Ken Angelsic. I am the assistant curator of paleomammalogy in the Department of Geology at the Field Museum. Thinking about paleontological collections in particular is basically the sort of slice of time that we live in, in the big picture in sort of Earth's history and the history of life on Earth, is an incredibly like short, small view of sort of the total biodiversity that's existed on Earth. So it's been estimated that probably more than 99% of all the species that have ever lived are extinct. And so paleontological collections are basically the record that we have accumulated and continue to accumulate of what happened for that sort of remaining 99% uh, of the time. And it's very important because it's essentially part of our history. So um, whether you're studying hominids that are a couple million years old that are very close relatives of humans, or animals that I study that are sort of distant ancestors of mammals that lived 250 million years ago, or very early um, chordates that lived 500 million years ago that are some of our earliest ancestors. All of that is part of the, the history that you know, is our history, essentially. It's where we come from. And the more we can know about that history, the better we'll understand ourselves, the better we understand how the world around us works and changes over time, and um, essentially how to sort of protect it as best as we can. My name's uh, Rick Ree. I'm a, a curator in the botany department at the Field Museum. Biodiversity is always changing, and in order to best understand what species exist on Earth, we need to observe them as best we can and preserve their occurrence. And the only way to do that is to collect specimens and preserve them along with as much information as we can collect about the time and place that we collected these species. And we need to preserve these specimens in a way that will allow future generations to study them and understand what biodiversity existed at this particular time and place.